you're all healthy and safe and that your families are as well. Uh, we'll begin our worship this morning with uh, the song, Because He Lives. Well, let's all sing together. God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus, He came to love, heal and forgive, He lived and died, to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I confess tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know he holds the future, and life is worth a living just because he lives and then one day i'll cross that river i'll fight life's final war with pain and then as death gives way to I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know He lives because He lives. I confess tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone because I know And life is worth a living just because He lives. The next song is Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I, my Savior, am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This time, Brother Kevin Dillon will lead us in uh, reading and prayer. Today's reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby, if so be that ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a lively stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, today we have definitely tasted 
that you are gracious. In all ways, Heavenly Father, you have been nothing but kind and good to us. We appreciate, Father, our lives. We appreciate the opportunity to be your children and to come together as we regularly do to worship you and to offer spiritual sacrifices. Lord, thank you for the blessing of your Son, Jesus Christ. And as we derive our spiritual life from his resurrection, we pray, Heavenly Father, that we will live becomingly as his brothers and sisters and your children. Forgive us for our sins. Bless the people that are sick today. Bless the Skipworth family in their bereavement. And we ask you, Father, to comfort them with all the comfort that you can give them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before Matt brings us his uh, thoughts and devotional message about the uh, Lord's Supper and Communion, we'll sing, Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Near the cross I'll watch and wait, hoping, trusting ever. Till I reach the golden strand. Just beyond the river, in the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. that task without dropping my Bible. Uh, good morning everyone on this Father's Day. I want to say Happy Father's Day to those fathers out there. Um, our communion thought will come from Mark chapter 14 uh, this morning. And I want, in, in my mind, I'm, I'm going back to about six and a half years ago. And I remember the first worship service after uh, Benny was born. Uh, and I remember communing that morning, uh, gathering around the Lord's table, and as a new father, it gave me perspective on that sacrifice, to think about how truly difficult it was for God to send His only Son to die for us. And as Christ was hanging there on the cross, and as His life was slowly leaving His body, as the blood poured from his brow, from his hands and his feet. He was losing that life-giving blood. And he turned to the one who he knew was his father. And when he cried out to, to God and he cried out, My God, my God, he was thinking of his father. But before that, we go back to the Garden of Gethsemane. And we think about that close personal relationship. Before big moments in Jesus' life, before he started his ministry, for example, he went out into the desert um, and, and in fasting and in being away from everyone, he grew closer to his Father and he spent much time in prayer and meditation there in the wilderness. And he grew closer to his Father in that instance. And now before the trial, before the crucifixion, we see Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane 
And in the movie, if you've seen the movie The Passion of Christ, um, it gets this scene, just the emotion of that. Um, I think it portrays it great. But we're going to read through that this morning. Again, Mark chapter 14, right after the institution of the Lord's Supper. We'll start with Jesus' prayer in Gethsemane in Mark 14, verse 32. And they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little further, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Jesus was God. God was Jesus. But while Jesus was on earth, he had to separate himself from God because God could not be part of the sin that was going to take place. And so he goes and he, he pleads with his Father, with his Heavenly Father, and he says, knowing, because again, he was God, he, he had that foreknowledge of what was going to happen, and he said, God, if there's an, another way, if this cup, if this responsibility could pass from me, and we could do this another way, please, could that happen? But ultimately, it was God's plan for him to sacrifice himself for our sins. Let's think about that sacrifice as Christ gave his body for us. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this bread that represents your son's body. As he prayed to you on that evening and was later crucified, we are grateful for that sacrifice such a sacrifice for he, but also for you, for the love that you had for your son. We thank you for that, that you loved us so much that you gave his life for us. We pray in his name. Amen. As a new father is so excited to tell about the birth of their child. God, too, was so excited to the rebirth of Christ when he, when he came back from the dead. He was so excited to set a plan in motion. But if you remember, after, after Christ rose from the grave, he, he told those, don't go out and tell everyone just yet. There's a greater plan in place. And then some days later, the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, Peter preached that great gospel sermon talked to the exact people that crucified Jesus, those people, were their hearts were pierced and they said, what can we do to have these sins forgiven? What can we do to be saved? And Peter replied to them, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness, and you will be saved for the forgiveness of your sins. And it's the same, it's the same statement that we made putting on Christ in baptism. We too have that forgiveness of sins because of his blood. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for that blood that cleanses us, that brings us back to the cross, that keeps us near to that cross. And God, help us to be forever grateful of that, forever grateful of your Son and that sacrifice. And we pray in his name. Amen. We thank you for being here. and. Uh, participating in this communion. If you're watching with us and you're able to uh, commune with us this morning, it's great to be together as, as the Lord's people, either um, through, the, uh, through YouTube um, or here in person. Uh, we are also commanded to give on the first day of the week, and uh, the convenient time to do that is as we drive through here the rainport when we leave, there'll be a basket to do that. Uh, let's pray a blessing over our shepherds, uh, our elders, as uh, they make those decisions on what best to do with the money collected. Let's pray together. God, we're grateful for uh, the, the way that we can provide for our families, uh, the way that you take care of us always. God, as this money is collected, we pray your blessing over it, your wisdom and guidance for uh, the eldership, for uh, Brother Tim uh, and Mac and Randy and the great job that they do um, in, in leading us and the decisions that they're making recently and how we're able to still worship and the, the foresight of that. God, we pray for your kingdom across the world that it may be spread. 
And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Before Chris brings us our message this morning, let's sing, Faith is the Victory. Faith is the Victory. <laughs> Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise, and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in vows below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him who overcomes the full white raiment shall begin. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in him. Then onward from the hues of light, our hearts with love aflame will vanquish all the hosts of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate you, Matt, and Kevin Dillon, all for taking part this morning. I want to begin by saying... Uh, as you have heard already, Happy Father's Day to who that pertains to. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit more in just a moment, but we want to begin this morning by again mentioning Roy Skipworth and our sympathy to he and the Mantle family uh, for the passing of Jeanette. Uh, Jeanette is going to be missed uh, by many of us and know that that's going to be a void in that family. And we do pray that the Lord brings his comfort to that good family uh, we also pray for uh, the Sparkmans for both Betty and Ed uh, for the Roberts Gail and her treatments for Martha Hill it's so good to see uh, Martha and Jackie with us uh, making a comment that I don't know if they're sisters or mother and daughter because they're they're looking both very young these days and so glad that they're both doing well uh, David senior uh, of course would always appreciate our prayers Margaret Marks and also for Wanda Sue Dooley. This will be a new one that we'll add to our prayer list. Wanda Sue Dooley. This is uh, Michael Dooley's uh, grandmother has now uh, is under hospice care. Uh, can you hear me? Toot your horns if you can hear me. Okay. So we're on 90.3 if you can't hear us. Uh, maybe look around see who's still uh, struggling a little bit. Appreciate all of you who have made comments, gave cards and, and gifts to Matthew and his graduation uh, this past Thursday. Uh, wasn't able to invite a lot of people. We, there was a limited number, of course, and uh, but we appreciate uh, all of you for remembering him. Uh, lots of uh, lots of prayers, and we're so proud of Matthew and what he's accomplished and will continue to accomplish. And uh, appreciate your prayers for us. We've got what three more uh and so we're still working on that so i uh, also appreciate your prayers for uh this congregation and and the many things that we have going on uh the outreach that we're trying to conduct and for you i appreciate you for being here if you're streaming with us we appreciate also you for watching you know i love being a dad i i love hearing the word dad or daddy o or daddy or hey you <laughs> and know that it's being addressed to me there's not a day that goes by that i don't think about my daddy uh, i hear something or i see something uh, my dad was a musician and i'll hear a, a song on the radio and i'll think well my dad would like that song or 
you know, I'll smell a certain scent that reminds me of him, or I'll see someone who reminds me of my father. And, and, and there's something that happens every day that, that causes me to remember my dad. And what I want to say to you is if you still have your father on this earth, uh, treasure those moments that you have with him and, and your mom for that matter treasure the moments that you have with your parents because uh, they're not going to be around forever and some of us don't have our fathers anymore and uh, it, it's a sad day when we think about that but it's also a happy day uh, when we think about our good fathers and and how they love the Lord and and we'll one day get to see them again so that's what uh, brings uh, to mind on Father's Day is just knowing how good God is to us and the promises that we have. We've been speaking about three levels of maturity and this morning we're going to finish up that talk about spiritual growth and spiritual maturity. Uh, we've been talking about how these three levels, uh, it, it's not like other things where once you reach one level then then you kind of delete one level. This one? There we go. Maybe you can hear me a little better now. Thank you, Michael. These levels aren't like you reach one level and you forget about the other level, but these three levels that we're going to talk about build on top of one another. Number one, we talked about dependence. When we come from 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 through 5, a dependence is the discovery that we are totally 100% dependent on God for everything that pertains to life and godliness. There's no experience, no misfortune, nothing on this earth that we experience or will go through that God has not also given us the knowledge and the wisdom and the ability to overcome. Now you may think, what about sickness and death? Well, if we are in the Lord, if we're dependent on the Lord, then we will ultimately overcome sickness and death uh, in heaven, in eternity with the Lord. Number two, we've talked about the level of independence. This comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, 6 through 9. This is the acknowledgement that although God's will and desire for His created mankind is for us all to come to the knowledge of truth, 1 Timothy 2, 4, and for us to obey that truth, John 15 and verse 14, He will not force us to do that. He will not make us do that. He is not, uh, he's not that puppeteer leading us, pulling our strings in ways that, that we don't agree with. And that's where the independence come from. He allows us to independently make the decision to follow His will. We choose Him. We choose to obey Him. We choose to, to love Jesus. We choose to believe in Jesus. We choose the salvation that God offers only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Number three this morning, we're going to talk about another level of maturity. And we're going to call it inner dependence. If you would, turn back to 1 Peter chapter 2. We'll begin there in verse 1. appreciate Kevin reading through verse 5, but we will read a little further than that. And as we're reading this, I want you to pick up on the language that Peter is using that points towards this idea of being dependent on one another, this inner dependence that, that we share. Therefore, he says, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, evil speaking as newborn babes. Desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to Him as to a living stone rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the Scriptures. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But those who are disobedient to the stone which the builders rejected has come before the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. But you are chosen, a chosen generation, a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now a people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy mercy. In, inner independence or interdependence is the idea that two or more people or two or more things depend on one another. 
If you will go back and watch this casting on YouTube, you'll see perhaps a picture that Michael has put up for us on the PowerPoint of the, the arch in St. Louis, the, the arch gateway. Uh, when they were building this arch, they of course started at the bottom with the two legs that were going up. And about a, a third of the way up, they ran into a problem with the legs swaying. And they were afraid that if a, a good gust of wind would come by, it would blow down one of those huge, enormous legs. And so they figured out this way to run a 60-ton uh, metal beam through the middle of it. And there's a picture of that beam uh, on the PowerPoint. And it would, it would secure these legs. Now... Their goal was to, when they get to the apex of the Golden Arch, the Golden Arch, I'm thinking of McDonald's, <laughs> when they got to the apex of this archway in, in St. Louis, they would put in what they called a keystone. This keystone, I believe they said, was about an eight foot wide piece of a steel that they were going to wedge in between the two legs. And as they wedged that keystone in between those two legs, it would disperse the, the weight of the, each leg onto that keystone and it would relieve the two legs of the weight. Therefore, they would depend on one another with that keystone being that middle support. When we think about this idea of needing one another, when we lean on one another, we have the keystone, or as Peter calls it, the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone. Jesus Christ on which we are built, in which we sustained, in which we live. See, we are dependent on one another for strength. We're dependent on one another for prayer. We're dependent on one another to, to, to be encouraged and to lift one another up with Jesus Christ being that chief cornerstone. It's Jesus Christ who gives us the power and the ability to, to alleviate one another's burdens. That's the idea of interdependence. And if you go back and you read what we read there in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, I want you to, to notice the language that Peter uses and, and think about you depending on others and others depending on you. I depend on you. You depend on me. We depend on one another. He says, as newborn babes, living stones, built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, therefore you who believe, He is precious to you. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation. You are His own special people. You are not a people, but now you're a people of God who have attained to mercy. It's always in a plural sense here. He's not singing, singling out one individual or one race. Mankind, those who would obey the gospel, become Christians. You are this holy priesthood. Peter is indicating something that I think we all know, but perhaps seldom take advantage of. Peter is saying that we're all, every one of us, we're all in this together. We are not supposed to battle alone. We're not supposed to fight alone. If we are a member of God's family, according to Ephesians chapter 2, 11 and following, we're supposed to be doing this Christianity thing together. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as a body, we are interdependent on one another. The phrase, one another, occurs something like a hundred times in the New Testament. And approximately 59 of those occurrences are specific commands on how and how not to treat one another. How the body of Christ is to treat and how the body of Christ is not to treat one another. And so when we think about these one another passages in Scripture, obedience to these passages, these commands are essential. Because it is from these commands that we learn the basis of true Christian community. There are the positive one another commands. Love one another. John 13 and verse 34, I believe this command is found at least 16 times in the New Testament. <laughs> Love one another. Love one another. Be devoted to one another, Romans 12 and verse 10. Honor one another above yourselves, Romans 12 and verse 10. Build one another up, Romans 14, 19. Admonish one another, Romans 15, 14. Care for one another, 1 Corinthians 12, 25. Serve one another, Galatians 5 and verse 13. Bear one another's burdens, Galatians 6, 2. Forgive one another, Ephesians 4 and verse 2. Be patient with one another, Colossians 3 and verse 13. And, and the list goes on and on and on about these one another passages. We are love one another, care for one another, encourage one another, admonish one another. Because if we're not doing it for one another, then who is doing it? 
Where do we get this godly spiritual encouragement? Nowhere but the church. Nowhere but the people of God can we gain this encouragement and this love that we need. The prayers one to another. I love praying to God on your behalf, but there's nothing like the feeling of knowing that someone else is mentioning my name to God. I love to know that you pray for me, that you pray for my family, because I know that God is hearing my name and He's answering my prayers and He's listening to your supplications with thanksgiving. I, I love the idea that you talk to God about me. I posted something on Facebook the other day. It says, if you're going to talk about somebody behind their back, make sure you're talking to God. And, and so this morning, I, I'm going to give you permission to talk about me behind my back. <laughs> But make sure you're talking to God. I love the idea that you mention my name to God. There are negative commands. These are the com commands on how we're not to treat one another. Colossians 3 and verse 9, Paul says, Don't lie to one another. There is nothing good that will come out of a lie. Don't lie to one another. Stop passing judgment on one another. Romans chapter 14 verse 13. Don't keep biting and gnawing and devouring one another. You'll, you'll be destroyed by one another if you continue to do this. Galatians 5 and verse 15. Most congregations that shut their doors to the Lord's church, it's not because of outside forces. Most congregations that have to shut their doors is because there's inner strife and members are biting one another, devouring one another. Most causes of church closures today comes from the inside out, not from the outside in. Paul says don't keep biting and devouring one another because you're going to destroy one another. And then he says in Galatians 5 and 26, don't become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Be happy for one another. You know, if Kevin has an accomplishment, I'm not going to be jealous of Kevin. I'm going to be happy for Kevin. He's got a nice firebird that I really like. But I'm not going to be conceited and jealous of, of his car or his life. I'm happy for him. I, I'm glad that he can do the things that he does. You be happy for one another. If someone excels or, or accomplishes something, don't grow conceited and jealous, but be happy for them. Rejoice for them people. And we do all of this because we are, in a real sense, members of one another. You might remember that from 1 Corinthians 12. We are members of one another. We are, in essence, a part of one another. According to Galatians chapter 3, beginning of verse 26, says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. If you have put on Christ, then you are a Christian. You are a child of God, thus considered a family and compared to the body to illustrate our relationship that we are to have with one another. Apparently, I can't talk without my hands or my arms. Apparently, if you tied my hands behind my back, yeah, it works. I wouldn't be able to talk. We rely on other parts of our body. If, if we had no legs or no or feet, we, we could not walk. If we had no nose, we could not smell it. If we had no ears, we could not hear. If we had no eyes, we could not see. And go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and Paul compares the body of the church to a body. One member is not more important than the other. Lose a finger and see how important that finger was. Lose a toe and, and see just how important that toe was. I'm not more important than you than I'm standing here in front of you and, and you're not more important than me because you're not. We're all members of the same body. When you hurt, I hurt. When you rejoice, I rejoice. When you accomplish something, I'm happy for you. If we consider the needs of others before ourselves, then everyone's needs will be considered. But what happens is that perhaps we get caught up in our own needs and our own desires and our wants and we forget about the needs of others. But here's what happens. If we forget about the needs of others, then that means that others are forgetting about our needs and their needs are not being met, my needs are not being met because we've forgotten about one another. But if you're concerned about me and everyone else and everyone else can, is concerned about you, everyone's needs will be being met because that's the way it's supposed to be. And this can be a never-ending cycle either way. If you forget, they forget no one's needs are being met. 
But if I remember and you remember everyone's needs are being met, what would happen, church? What would happen if that Philippians chapter 2 concept was reintroduced and or heightened, highlighted, practiced even more in our lives? And this is what I'm talking about. Paul says, therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, which there is, if there's any comfort in love, there is, if any fellowship of the Spirit, there is, if any affection and mercy, there is, he says, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, letting nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, listen, each esteem others better than himself, let each one of you look out not only for his own interest, but also the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 2, 1 through 5. And what Paul is saying is everyone's needs would be met if we had this concern for one another. If you are hurting, if you are in need of prayer, then we may not know until you tell us. If I'm struggling in something, then you're not going to know unless I tell you. If my thumb is hurting, my brain is telling other parts of my body that my thumb is hurting. If my back is hurting, the other parts of my body is, is telling my brain that my back is hurting. And my whole body, my whole body, it, it, it comes together in that hurt. I believe Ecclesiastes chapter 4, 9 through 12 illustrates this point better than others that we are interdependent to one another he says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor for if they fall one will lift up his companion companion but woe to him who is alone when he falls for he has no one to help him up again if we lie down together they will keep warm now this is pure language here he's talking about in weather if it's cold you, you you warm one another with each other's body heat if you're alone you'll stay cold but how can one be warm alone the one may be overpowered by another two can withstand him and a three four cord is not quickly broken you see if the devil can single us out if the devil can make us feel like we're going through this alone, if, if the devil can make us ostracize ourselves from the flock, then he can tear us down and knock us down one by one. But see, the devil knows there's power in numbers. The devil knows there is strength in numbers. God made it that way. That's why he says we are members of one another because there is strength in one another. If we stick together, a three-four cord is not quickly broken. But if you allow the devil to lead you in, in, into a direction where you're alone, then yeah, he's going to single you out and you feel like you'll destroy your relationship with God. But that doesn't have to be the case. Because you can look around, look in your mirrors, in your rear, rear view mirror, turn around and look. This is your family. Th these are people who care about you, who love you. We are truly dependent on one another because we have independently made the decision to be dependent on God. You're my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I love you. And I care for you. And I want what's best for you. I want to be happy when you're happy. I, I want to be sad when you're sad. I want to grieve when you grieve. I, I want to rejoice when you rejoice. That, because that's what family does. There's something that I say almost routinely when I get the opportunity to help one of my brothers and sisters in Christ. They'll always say, you know, Chris, thanks for helping. And my... My response is, and, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, that's what we're here for. This is what we're here for. No, we, we can't come together in, in a building, but we're coming together in spirit in this parking lot. We're showing our love one for another. We're showing our love for God. And listen, we're like that St. Louis arch. Alone, those legs alone, we, we wobble and we fall. But when we get to that apex where Christ 
is that chief cornerstone. When He is our keystone, that brings the church together. And the devil can't shred it apart. The devil can't tear us apart. But we got to make that decision to be dependent on Him and interdependent on one another. I, I can't make it to heaven without you. You can't make it to heaven without these people who are surrounding you right now. I hope we never forget that. I hope we independently make the decision to lean on one another, to love one another, to trust one another, because that's why we're here. If you have any needs, if you need prayer, please let us know. Now, don't leave the parking lot today. Uh, circle around if you have to. Whatever you have to to come back, let us know and we want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. We're never too busy for that. If you're not yet a child of God, if you've not yet become a part of God's family, then, then you need to do that. Through your faith, you believe in Christ Jesus as your Savior. And through that faith, you're buried in the, in the baptism of His blood. You rise up to be a new creature, part of His family, so you can have that hope, that assurance in that family. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we love You so very much. We thank You for our family here at Mars Hill. And I do pray, God, if there's anyone who is struggling, if there's anyone who is, is lacking in their faith, that You will strengthen them, build them up, God, and help them to rely on, on the others. Help them to rely on us. Help us to be aware of one another's needs, God. Help us to, to, to be comfortable depending on one another, Lord. We thank You for Jesus. And we thank You for Him being our cornerstone, our keystone that, that holds us together and strengthens us. We love You, Lord. We want nothing more than but to please You and, and help us to do that even better today than we've ever have, God. We just pray, Lord, that You'll be with the sick of our number, that You'll be with those who are shut in, that You'll be with those who are struggling this Father's Day, missing their loved ones, God. I just pray uh, that You will strengthen us all, comfort us all, Lord, and, and help us with the strength that we need to live a life that heaven is our home eternal. We thank You so much for being our Father and our God. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you again for being with us today. As usual, we will exit through the rain port here. Uh, there will be someone here to take up contribution. Hope you have a beautiful rest of the week. and We'll see you again uh, Wednesday night uh, on uh, the live stream. Have a beautiful day. God bless you.